Okay, this is Spreadsheets Standard 5. We're going to look at some charts and graphs. Some of the different types of charts and graphs, um, this, this is one of the things that Excel is really powerful at, is, is creating a visual representation of your data. So I'm going to start with a pie chart because, hey, pie is good. I'm going to select our data here. I'm going to start up top because I want to be using this month as a label. So I've selected A2 through A6. And let's look at June and let's see what proportion of cells were done by each salesperson. I'm going to hold down my control key and this is going to activate the multi-select and I can choose now to add another column here that isn't right next to each other. So I can just selectively get the data that I want. Now I'm going to go to my insert tab and in my insert tab there are some charts here. Here's recommended charts and it gives us some ideas of things we can use. I'm going to start, like I said, with a pie chart. And when I start with a pie chart, you can see what I've got is I've got the data from each of the salespeople. Because I've selected June up top here, Excel has figured out that that's going to be the label of our chart. So I can just click OK. And it shows a good proportion representation here of what we have for June. Maybe I want to show some data over time. Maybe I want to track Alice's sales. So I'm going to select Alice, and I'm going to, again, insert another chart. The chart I want to use here is probably going to be a line chart. Line charts are good for tracking how things move over time. So you can see what I've got with this line chart is here's Alice's sales over time. I'm going to delete that one. Let's track everybody's sales over time and see what we get. So if we come in here again, select all of our data, go to insert, let's find a line chart. So here's a representation of how everyone is doing. And so you can maybe start to see that it's not just that we have some good months and some bad months by salespeople. They tend to trend pretty much together. So in March, everybody had a little bit better month. In April, they were back down. So over time, we can see where we're at. I'm going to move this chart down here. Two more chart types we're going to mess with here. Let's select all of our data again. Let's go insert. And on this, these are a column chart. Columns, remember, go up and down. And I don't know why they didn't keep this the same, but a chart that goes across is a not a row chart like we're used to seeing in the spreadsheet. It is actually um, a bar chart. So column, just remember, just goes up and down. And if I choose to do this type of a column chart, I click here, click OK. So here's my chart, and I didn't want to move it like that. I want to grab the whole thing. So with this chart, you can see I've got each month broken out. I've got each salesperson by color. Move this over here. In a little bit, we're going to start looking at customizing some options in here. So those, those are some of the types you can use. So let's look now at the pie chart and customizing it. I'm going to make it bigger just so we can see it a little bit better. And of course, since it went in first using layers, it's going to be on the bottom. So here's June. Now, when we click on the item, we have our contextual menus that appear. I click off of it, the contextual menu goes away. So let's click back on. Here are some different options that we have with our, with our chart. We have some predefined things we can do. So if we want to change the way it looks, these are some pre-built ones for us here. I don't know which one looks good or not. Let's use this one here. I can also add and subtract chart elements by coming over here on the left-hand side. And if I wanted to put a title in a different place, I can center it. That's not going to work because we're going to have this overlap on this. I could take out the title completely. I could put labels move those around just by choosing where I want to be. Maybe I don't have labels at all. Maybe I had them there. Uh, I can put a legend. Right now the legend would be on the right, the top, the left, the bottom. And so there's some other options here. I can really rather quickly change my chart to make it something that I'd like to see. I can also change my chart type while I'm in here. If it turns out that the pie chart is maybe not what I wanted to see, I'm going to click on this. And I can change my chart to a different type. Maybe I want to make it three-dimensional. Um, 
maybe I want to do something different, make it a donut chart. Okay, so there's a lot of different options here, but we're just going into our chart tools. We could also right click on them. So I can change things here by right clicking or by going into the contextual menu. Let's look at a few more options we have with our charts now that we have a chart that is maybe acceptable to us and we, we want to get it formatted for our big presentation. One of the things I can do is in my contextual menu here, I'm going to move this chart. And I have some options. I can put it into a new sheet or I could create it as an object in something else. In this case, I'm going to create it as a new sheet. And now what it does is it moves my whole chart down here to its own tab. I can rename it quarter one, quarter two. I can also do some other editing things. We only sell whole units, but the chart is trying to give us a scale here of the half units. So I'm just going to left click there. And when I right click, I'm going to format my axis. When I format my axis, you can see that the minimum is zero. The maximum is 4.5. Like I said, we don't do half units, so let's make that four. And then our major lines are going to be just whole units. So I'm going to turn that into one. And now what I've done is I've taken these half units out and it looks, makes my chart look a little more fuller and takes out those extra numbers that are kind of probably distracting to us. Again, selecting my chart brings me my chart tools. Uh, you may notice we have some other buttons up here. This is another way that we can get to the things uh, that we can format in our chart. So if we wanted to add something, here's our titles. So I can put an access title there. And that would just simply be, we change this to say number of units. Let's do that now. Number of units. So we've got that access right there. Uh, we can change some formatting gives us some different options here. So there's there's a lot of different ways we can get to this, uh, the formatting options here. If I don't like a particular color, uh, maybe I'm not a fan of the yellow here, I can just go choose a different color. And when I do that, it's going to change. Maybe that makes the orange a little bit too much. Let's point this back on a light yellow. Now I've completely messed it up. That's okay. Let's just control Z a couple times and get us back where we were. Again, clicking on the chart, go into my tools, I can switch the column in the row. Now this, as you see along the bottom here, we have this broken out by month, and then each salesperson is their own different color. If I switch the row and column, it now breaks it out by the salespeople in their own little section here, and the months are different colors. So if you need to look at your data differently, you can use the change chart type, and it gives you just a, another way to look at what you've got going on in here. Finally, let's look at the filter. Let's take, I can take out portions of it. So if I want to take out January, if I want to take out Bob, so let's, let's take Bob out right now. When I apply this, Bob just disappears. So he's no longer part of our data. Um, I'm going to control Z to undo that. Back into my chart elements. Bob is still gone. There we go. So I can also format bits and pieces of it. So you can play around in this. There's just lots of things you can do to make your chart look just perfect, show you what you uh, are looking for. And that is it for Standard 5.